Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at multiplying monomials today. So we've talked about what monomials are and what polynomials are, and we're going to be multiplying monomials. Just a quick review on what a monomial is. Here are two examples of monomials. A monomial is a single term with a coefficient and variable. Um, where, again, the exponents are all positive and there's no variable in the denominator. So it is a polynomial with one term, and that would be a monomial. So in this example, we are multiplying 2x to the power of 4, which is a monomial, times another monomial, 4xy to the power of 2. When you're multiplying monomials, Remember, polynomials are separated by addition subtraction. With that, you can't do anything to join them together. When they're separated by multiplication, we can sure do something about that. Because remember, 2x to the power of 4 means 2 times x to the power of 4. So what we're going to do is just basic rules for beginners on this. We're going to separate all of them and then combine them. And so let's look at what is 2x to the power Power four. Well, that means 2 times x times x times x times x. x times itself four times. And then 4xy squared is 4 times x times y times y. And with us multiplying every single thing here, we're multiplying this times this times this times this. It's all multiplying straight across. So we can join together like terms, which is wonderful. I'm going to use the commutative property and sort of shift things around. I'm going to join all the x's next to each other, all the y's together, and all the numbers over on the far left. So again, all I basically did was take this 4 and shift it over, and then everything else lined up. And now I'm going to multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. Perfect. x times x times x times x times x is x to the power of 5. y times y is y squared. And now I'm done. All right. So basic rule, you can solve multiplying monomials in this way. You can solve multiplying polynomials in this way. There are some shortcuts I'm going to show you, but if you're starting out and you want to get comfortable with it, a good way to start out is to separate them into what they, you know, every individual thing that's multiplied, and then join them all together. Again, using the commutative property, this step here um, is not really necessary if you just take the number times the numbers. It just helps me to kind of lay it out so that I can see it more clearly. All right. Now let's get a little bit more advanced. Let's say you're comfortable with that idea and you want to try and make your life a little bit um, less complicated. What you can do instead of separating x times x times x times x, x times x, y, y times y, right? Instead of separating them all out completely, you can just separate them like this, OK? Again, I'm taking the numbers negative 5 times 7, x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2, y times y squared. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just basically in this first step, I'm doing a lot of what we did in, that, in, in the first three steps of that previous problem. All right? If you want to expand these out first and then move them around, that's fine. I've just moved them around in the first step. And then at the end, you see this one here? After I have my x's next to each other, I'm still expanding them. And I'll show you a shortcut that later on where you may not need to expand them all. But for now, we're going to expand them all out. And then we're going to multiply like normal. So we have x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's. y and y squared. That's 1, 2, 3 x, or 3 y's. Bring them together, negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. Now, did you notice anything from start to finish when we did that? Let's take a look at this, and, and I'll, I'm going to point out a couple of things. When we joined our y's together, we had one y and two more y's, and that gave us three y's. When we have our x's, we had three x's and two x's, and we ended up with five x's. So instead of expanding everything out, would there have been a way to go from this step right to this step? Think about that for a minute, and then I'm going to show you a rule for exponents. Here's a shortcut or a rule for exponents I'm going to explain to you. x squared times x to the power of 6. If you have two terms 
and they have the same base. That's really important. They need to have exactly the same base, x and x. Instead of s separating them all out, you can just rewrite this as x to the power of and just add the exponents, 2 plus 6. And then you're done. 2 plus 6 is 8. Now, if you want to expand that out, that would be x times x. And this one here would be x times x times x times x times x times x. And then you count them all up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you'll end up with 8. You can do that if you'd like. But this is a little bit of a shortcut. It's a rule for exponents. And if you have the same base, you can just add the exponents. And if you use that rule, it's going to save you a lot of time when you get into more complicated questions. Let me show you one last question, a little bit more complicated, that again, I think you're going to be happy we know about this rule. Let's go ahead and solve that one. All right. And this one here is more complicated in a couple of ways. First, there's fractions. Second, there's negatives. Third, there's three terms in there, three monomials we're multiplying. So let's go ahead and follow exactly the same steps that we've done before. First step, we're going to put all of the numbers together, one half, two fifths, and negative three here. And we're going to put all the a's together, a to the power of two, a to the power of one, and a to the power of three. Then we'll put the b's together, b to the power of three, b from here, b to the power of seven. Put the c's together, c, c to the power of five, c squared. All right. Now, in the next step, instead of separating all of these out and expanding them all out, I'm just going to add the exponents. So I have a squared plus a plus a to the power of 3. How many a's do I have? 3, 4, 5, 6. So that will be a to the power of 6. All right, a to the power of 6. I have 3 b's, 4, and 7 is 11. Good. C, I've got 1, and 5 is 6, and 2 more is 8. So now I've been able to save all of that expanding while multiplying my exponents right across there. Multiplying fractions, I had a negative times a negative, so I know I'm going to end up with a positive. One half times two fifths, one times two is two, two times five is ten. So that would mean I would have two over ten times three will give me not two over ten, but six over ten, which reduces down to three over five. So I did all of that in one step. I'm assuming that you know how to multiply fractions and negatives. All right. If you struggle with that, there are some lessons on my, my channel about that. But we're multiplying, we should be comfortable multiplying negatives and fractions at this point. All right. So 3 fifths times a to the power of 6 times b to the power of 11 times c to the power of 8. And then we just get rid of those multiplication signs, and that's our final answer. Okay. A little bit quicker, if we had tried to expand all of this out, especially b to the power of 11, I think we would have run out of space on here. Um, not only that, it's just so much easier to just add the exponents. Notice we just add exponents for bases that are exactly the same. You can't start adding 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 7 plus 1 plus 5 plus 2 and then just say A, B, C to the power of 20 whatever, you know, 25. We can't do that, all right? That's not how we do things. You have to keep the A's together, the B's together, and the C's together. All right, that's, that's a place a lot of people make mistakes. All right, finishing things up, just a quick overview. You multiply the numbers. When you're multiplying monomials, you multiply the number times the numbers times the numbers, and you're done with that. You add the exponents for common bases. All right, if the bases are the same, like x and x, add the exponents. And then you simplify in your final step.